Also on the line, Peter Marisi from the University of Maryland. He's a smart guy when it comes to money and finance and business and all that kind of stuff. How are you, Dr. Marisi? Oh, I'm happy. I'm oh, happy. happy, happy, happy. That's good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, look. I keep telling myself that. So I can maybe <laughs> get through the next four years. I want to talk about what's going on with the EU and the bailout of Cyprus. Uh, bec- I mentioned this because I'm looking at stories today which are making very dire predictions about how our, our markets are going to react. The Nikkei plunged 2.7% on what's going on in Cyprus. The Hang Seng dropped 2.2%. Uh, other markets... Uh, plunge similarly all across Europe. Um, we said sort of a not, not a, a not a horrible loss on Friday uh, in the uh, in the Dow, but it, it didn't. It was the first time in eleven days it didn't make any money. So what's going on, and how bad is this likely to be in your assessment? Well, in Europe, the uh, the governments still stand behind the banks, not the eurozone or the European Union. And uh, deposit insurance in real banking crises, they don't have funds that are big enough. Uh, witness here uh, during our financial crisis, and the Federal Reserve just had to print money to bail out the banks. Well, in Cyprus, they can't do that, and so the other European states had to step in. Cyprus has a lot of overseas deposits. It has an international banking system. It's an international banking center. And they basically extracted a tax on deposits uh, in exchange for a bailout. And uh, that sends a terrible signal. It's not the first time this has happened in Europe, uh, but given the climate that we're in, uh, you know, it, 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 it does cast doubt over the security of any foreign deposits in a European bank. I think that it would be irresponsible, for example, for General Electric to continue to have uh, deposits in, in certain European banks uh, beyond what is necessary to conduct their daily commerce. Uh, when I say certain, I mean, you know, in most countries. I mean, the only places where I would feel relatively secure for now would be Germany, Britain, and the list is very short. All right, so let, let me ask you this. They're, they're talking about runs on banks in, in right. Cyprus. I mean, how is that likely to be reflected when the Dow opens today? Because I see that the futures are, are plunging. Well, as you know, the uh, investors on Wall Street behave to any kind of negative economic news in a panic fashion, just like they do uh, any kind of economic news in euphoria fashion. It doesn't really affect uh, uh, the U.S. economy at this time, and I think it's premature to draw such conclusions, but the herd will herd. I mean, that's what they do up there. Uh, this whole notion that you should evaluate uh, events on the basis of the next day performance of the U.S. stock exchange is of the most dubious, uh, you know, economic theories around. All right, so Peter Marisi, let's bring it close to home. By the way, our guest is Peter Marisi. You can follow him on Twitter, P Marisi One. Uh, you don't want to follow that other P Marisi. That'll that'll get you into trouble. Follow this guy. Uh, one thing that could affect the economy in a major way is the budget battle that's looming. Paul Ryan, representative from Wisconsin, chairman of the budget committee, put out a budget that balances the federal budget in ten years. You read an article somewhat critical of this, specifically about the assumptions and hopes that he has with regard to Medicare and Medicaid and the trajectory of costs there. Uh, why don't you flush that out for us? Well, in a nutshell, I don't believe that his Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, uh, programs would save money. Rather, they would shift the burdens onto the states and onto the elderly, and that in itself could create a crisis given the financial state of many of our elderly. Uh, they don't really contain costs, and they're not really solutions to those crises. It isn't that there aren't solutions available, it's just the Republicans are unwilling to embrace them, as are the Democrats. I mean, the Germans, by example, have a private system like ours. They have 80% government reimbursement, and they spend 12% of GDP on health care we spent eighteen percent so basically they get by on a third less uh... they better regulate prices in a nutshell i mean some prices do need to be regulated and uh... some stuff needs does need to be socialized in that fashion and health care is probably a, a good example we're the only industrialized country that tries to have market determined prices in, in health care of any consequence but is it truly market determined considering the federal government through medicare is shouldering the burden of so much of it uh, the market isn't really driving that is it well that's part of the problem you can't you don't have a market when federal and state governments are already paying going into obamacare fifty five percent of health care costs and now uh... Ins- insurance companies and, and firms will be mandated to provide so much that it's really hard to, you know, these mandated uh, uh, items in care.
that it's really hard to say that there is a market. You see, the whole no, you, in order to rely on a market, you have to have a market, and there ain't no market. But along those lines, and again, bringing it back to the U.S. Uh, budget, the overall picture of the budget, you had the president last week telling George Stephanopoulos that we don't really have a, a looming debt crisis, and John Boehner seemed to agree on the Sunday shows. Are they right, or is this just a, a nuanced way of looking at it? Yes, we have a debt problem, but it's not imminent, therefore they're not going to do anything about it. Uh, you have to understand that Mr. Obama is a Chicago poll, and local politicians tend to view uh, budget problems in terms of, I can always get the money from someplace else, <laughs> you know, Washington. And Mr. Obama has brought that mindset to him, and I'm still looking for the government on Mars that would bail him out. I think what he's really saying is, this is a problem for the next president. I don't want to deal with it. You have to understand that whether it's on immigration and recruiting Democratic voters in, Guatem in, 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 in Mexico or uh, the budget, Mr. Obama is much more concerned with building a Democratic majority for the future than solving uh, the, the country's problems. It, it's a religious conviction. He doesn't believe that Republicans are wrong. He believes that they are evil and responsible for all of the sins of the universe. When Pandora opened the box, you know, Karl Rove jumped out in his mind. <laughs> uh, and so, hey, he, there are many Republicans who would agree with that too, by the way. Well, that may that may be, but I think Karl Rove, you know, for, for making some bad calls on election night, is being unfairly villainized. He's a very smart guy who people should listen to. Uh, it's not when he gets impassioned like Peter Morisi. But in any case, uh, it goes to show once again that President Obama is really not interested in the welfare of the country. He's interested in some of the, the sort of uh, agenda of retribution on the wealthy. Uh, one last uh, quick thing, Peter Morisi, uh, we're expected to have Thomas Perez yeah. to be nominated to the uh, top labor position. Uh, is there anything that uh, the economy is going to react to on that? No, the Secretary of Labor is not a terribly important person. The President has decided he's going to have a, a very pro-labor NLRB. That's what matters, the National Labor Relations Board. And uh, who's ever there is just going to follow orders. It's kind of like Jacob Lew over at, at Treasury. People complain about what he is, but that's what the President wants. Americans have elected an ideologue as President of the United States, doesn't believe in budget restraints, doesn't believe on limits in printing money. Uh, we will pay a heavy price for this, just as right. we did uh, for some of George Bush's actions. America's basic problem in a nutshell, the country's had two losers in a row. All right. Peter Maurice, we leave it right there. Thank you so much. Take care. Always a pleasure.